Well, Jim, it seems like second generation wrestlers have been in the news a lot recently. And of course, it seems like just as soon as we were done recording the experience, talking about at the end of the show, talking about that segment at the end of SmackDown, the transfer of the belts or titles or championships, whatever they call it there, with Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, we talked about what we had seen in some of the early reports, and apparently that wasn't the end of the story, or apparently there was more to the story than we knew about at that time. Yes, and and by the way, we made the comment that it was an awkward segment, but that I didn't see anything particularly worth screaming at each other over, especially when I've seen shit really go off the rails on live TV. And re- remember the time that Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels went off the air uh, on Raw, unintended to go off the air because Michaels was playing ha-ha and all that other shit. Um, this didn't seem to be a big deal, but apparently there's underlying tension between a, a variety of these young ladies that came to the surface. So it, even though it didn't seem like a big deal at the time, it was even bigger than we thought that it was amongst them. Yeah, and I have to give credit to Mike Johnson a PW Insider Elite. Uh, I guess the website is actually pwinsiderelite.com. He's been all over this story with constant updates since the first since the story first broke on Friday. He's been on it like a cheap suit, and that's what Mike looks like often is a cheap suit. He's so frazzled all the time. He works so hard. Will you leave him alone? He's doing I a fine job. Him. But here him. are uh, some of the things that, again, PW Insider Elite has covered so far. I guess, uh, well, the most recent one is about another fight. Apparently there was going to be a fight backstage between Charlotte and Becky. We haven't even gotten to that yet. Or There was a confrontation between Charlotte and Becky backstage. Ugh. And it was in gorilla position in front of Vince and Bruce Pritchard. What are your thoughts on that? First of all, a big fight right there in front of Vince. Well, it was a big, it was an argument. A big argument Nobody, in front of Vince. Yes. Let's not, let's not just go off the beam here. No, they were obviously mad. Apparently the bone of contention as was, was, was reported first. And it, it still seems to be that that's what started the whole thing was that Charlotte didn't want to do the thing that they were laying out because it thought she thought that it made her look weak or her title reign look weak. And apparently there was some disagreement over whether she should hand Becky the, her belt, like, here, here's my belt. And then Becky would be standing there with both belts and then throw one at Charlotte. And so Charlotte was holding the belt when Becky went to reach for it. Charlotte pulled it away from her and then dropped it. And then Sonya Deville says, pick that up like she's the school marm. And she did, and then they had their awkward exchange, and Becky left in a huff, and the stuff with Sasha went on and everything. So Charlotte and Becky were apparently yelling at each other about the the whole thing in where Vince and because Vince and Bruce would be at, at Gorilla. That's where chances are both of both of them would be. So they're screaming in front of Vince, both of them. And I guess, well, it, 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 what what happened next? Did they have Charlotte? They walked her out of the building. Security walked her out to defuse the situation. She was bum-rushed, or or did she? Somebody else got involved. Sonya Deville that's was right. mad and wanted to fight about it. And that's what I have here, because, of course, we did hear that she was escorted by security out of the building after all this. <laughs> and this is escalating quickly. The article here from 8.38 this morning as we are recording, PWInsiderElite.com by Mike Johnson. The headline, Becky Lynch wasn't the only talent to get into it with Charlotte Flair at SmackDown. The latest on the Flair-Lynch fallout. The talk of the weekend was the Charlotte Flair-Becky Lynch confrontation that went down after their segment on Fox's Friday Night SmackDown this past Friday. As PWInsider.com first reported early Saturday morning, The heated back and forth between the two took place after Flair, in an unscripted moment, pulled the Raw Women's Championship away from Lynch and dropped it, with the belief being that it was done to make Lynch look stupid and one-up her. That's in quotes. Sonya Deville demanded Flair pick the belt up, which Flair did before handing it to Deville. The Lynch confrontation took place in the gorilla position, in full view of Vince McMahon and Bruce Prichard, among others, and received the lion's share of attention initially. But Lynch wasn't the only person upset with Flair. Two different sources described Sonya Deville as, quote, mad enough to want to fight Flair, and at one point, also having an argument with Flair backstage at SmackDown. 
The Lynch argument was said to have been loud and angry, with Lynch described as standing up for herself after being disrespected. Thus far, the blame for the situation has fallen on Charlotte Flair, with several claiming that the situation started after Flair made it clear she felt the segment made her and her championship reign look weak. There have been several alleged instances where Flair's behavior has led to issues in recent months, including a legitimate back and forth with Nia Jax in the ring on Raw. The criticism of Flair has been that she's self-indulgent towards protecting herself and making sure all the attention is on her, but one source not close to Flair said, quote, let's be honest, that's what stars do. They make sure their star power remains the same or greater. Another source noted that the resentment towards Flair has been building in recent weeks, and it was, quote, just a matter of time before something happened. Flair was escorted out of the building by WWE officials, which some close to her pointed to as a sign of disrespect in itself, given her family's history with the company and her importance to the SmackDown brand going forward. That's the crux of the story, Jim. Well, what are your thoughts? Also, here's the thing, walking her out of the bit. Did did they think that somebody was going to jump her or she was going to turn around and jump somebody else and they were going to have a pull apart? Can't you, I, I mean, I've kicked some people out of the fucking building. Go. Go on, get out of here. Go home. I'll call you later. It is interesting. What the fuck? Usually, from my experiences, when someone's escorted out of the building, it's to protect them, not the other way around. Well, but, but, but I'm just, again... I'm just uh, amazed and gobsmacked at the reaction from everybody over this. When I've seen <laughs> in that same company, Sean and Brett got in a goddamn fight in Hartford that night, the famous hair pulling incident. And uh, nobody suggested that they were going to escort Brett out. And Sean left on his own recognizance before anybody <laughs> could suggest that. I don't think they would have. I mean, that's why I'm saying I've said the all of the years of the click and and all of the massive misbehavior in an unprofessional manner from guys not wanting to lose belts, getting in fights in locker rooms, fucking who knows what else. And suddenly this is a goddamn scene of chaos where all these girls are going to have pull aparts over dropping belts and shit. And I'm not trying to take up. For Charlotte Flair, because everybody's, oh, Cornette loves the flares. The last time I took up for a flare was a few weeks ago when poor Rick was being maligned for the Dark Side of the Ring episode, and <laughs> I tried Rick. to I try to take up for him. And what comes out a day or two later, he's leading a fundraiser for Donald Trump. So you can't say anything good about anybody anymore. Nature of all people. I can't even fucking compliment Ric Flair anymore because he wants a goddamn criminal megalomaniac to fucking ruin the world again. So I'm not taking up for Charlotte because I like Rick because I'm not happy with Rick because of what I just mentioned. But what the fuck? This whole thing. Yes, stars do are self-absorbed and do try to protect themselves. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I'm saying there's been much more egregious instances of it in this company in the past. And nobody ever flipped out. And there must be just all kinds of heat amongst these girls if what we saw in the ring led to screaming and yelling in front of Vince and all that stuff. Uh, and I don't doubt that they're probably all pissed at Charlotte. But again, from the company of, you know, Shawn Michaels and the Click and fucking shitting in people's bags and not dropping belts and hijacking live television programs and et cetera, et cetera. And suddenly they're having people escorted out because the girls got in an argument. I just, I don't get it. I, I, I think they ought to let what, what Watts would have done. Hey, Charlotte, Becky, there's the ring. You got 15 minutes, work it out. Well, Vince gets a little more loopy. That option may be on the table, but... <laughs> This whole thing, I mean, remember a little while back, some people jumped on me because I was bold enough to say that Ashley Flair will be in AEW not too long from now. Well? I don't know how much longer she is for that company. Now, that puts them in a tricky position, because what do you do? If she's difficult and no one wants to work with her, from Nia Jax, who's had her own issues, to Becky Lynch, who's 
pretty popular within the company. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's the range there. If you have problems with everyone and you're difficult to the point where you're being escorted out of the building by either security or officials, I don't know how often that happens to a wrestler. I haven't seen it. I have not seen it. That's what that's what that's what they do like at, at the office when they fire the office employees. They have them walked out, right? So they can't steal shit or something. Yeah, but Andrade wasn't there to clean out her office yeah. as they were escorting <laughs> her out. But that's the point. Andrade's in AEW. Her dad is right now in wrestling purgatory till whatever happens, happens. But does WWE release her and hand her to AEW? Does WWE punish her? For whatever, whatever is punishable here, how does WWE deal with this? Because of AEW, assuming AEW would want Charlotte Flair, and for talent reasons, they absolutely would. Whether there's a personality issue or not, time will tell, but they stayed away from Tessa Blanchard for a reason, even though her dad was there. Charlotte Flair, again, her husband's there, or her future husband, whatever the hell's going on with those two. What do you do if you're WWE? How do you handle Charlotte Flair right now? Is this part of the plan, Smithers? Does perhaps she's like, you know, I don't give a fuck because <laughs> I'll either be here or they can let me go and I'll be there. Maybe she's just like, I'm just not going to fucking take any shit and trying to force the issue. Who knows? But how can you, how can you discipline someone for accidentally, which is what I believe the quote was, I accidentally dropped it for accidentally dropping a belt. Who was the first one to yell in the back? If she was yelling back, then how do you discipline somebody for yelling at, at someone who's yelling at them? I don't know that she would have started the yelling because apparently Becky was the one that was offended. So what the f again? But again, it's wrestling. You got the guys yelling at each other. Or in this case, the girls yelling at each other. That's happened. I... I, I, I I don't know. I have no idea of... Uh... Well, here's another way to look at it. After the Nia Jack Charlotte thing, they tried to capitalize on it and come back with it. Yeah. Personal feelings aside, do you try to capitalize on the buzz that there's some problems with Becky and Charlotte, even though they're I... now on different brands and doing different things? Well, I would. And, and unlike Nia Jax, they can actually work. So it might be a good match. Um, the whole idea of, we talked about this, the whole idea of having identical championship belts, just a different color and then just trading them like, okay, here's an example. You're a big baseball fan, right? They got the American league and they got the national league. That's right. And you get, and you, you, the, the winners of each goes to the super, not the super bowl, the world, but the world series. series. That's yes. right. Yes. What if the National League team that won just, you know, we'd rather be in the American League. The American League said, well, we'd rather be in it, so we'll just switch. Would that work? Could that be done? Well, it couldn't be done at that point in the season when you're already at the World Series, but there have been teams to switch leagues. Like, for instance, this year, the Astros were in the World Series. Traditionally, they had been a National League team. About a decade ago, they switched to the American League. But they're not going to just both win the championship of their respective field league, whatever, and then just, oh, we'll switch. No, that doesn't happen. I wonder why. Because it makes Maybe no sense. Because it doesn't make any sense, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so already they're fiddle-fucking around with both of their women's champions, and one of them apparently didn't like it. So I don't, again, why can't the women's champion wrestle on both brands and the, or the men's champion for that matter, and all of the people on each brand want to fight and struggle and get ahead to face that champion, not champions. It's just, it's just all show business. It's like the, the two teams of the Harlem Globetrotters. Did we get Curly and Metal Arc or did we get Goose? I mean, you know, it, it's, it's showbiz. So there's no pretense even being made here that it's legitimate. So when you got somebody like Charlotte that probably – and rightfully should take herself very seriously. It's like, what the fuck are we doing here? So I don't know, but my God, as I said, in the, in the way of train wreck segments, I will, I will say this in the way of train wreck segments, 
with people being unprofessional to each other and trying to fuck with the other one, this was not that high up on the list for all this drama, in my opinion. Well, some may look at this situation and hear about the situation and think that if all these wrestlers really have such a big problem, go talk to Vince. I know The Undertaker's not there anymore, but go have wrestler's court. And of course, if you had a wrestler's court, you would need a wrestler's attorney. And I know a man who's so good, he specializes in all sorts of law, from bird law to wrestling law. There's only one man I'm thinking of, Jim. You, if it's the man that I'm thinking of, then that's right. There's only one man that specializes in wrestling law, bird law, and law law, and that is the legal beagle himself. Call Stephen P. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he may have started out as just a merely a small town bird lawyer, but he has blossomed. He has flown from the nest and he has reached the pinnacle of personal injury attorneys and various forms of attorneys across America to be the man, the myth, the legend, Stephen P. New, newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084, whatever your legal need, if you have been wronged or maligned or injured or damaged or in some way been the victim of greedy and avaricious individuals, Stephen P. New can fight for your, your justice, your compensation, your freedoms, and most importantly, your payoff. He'll get you paid. And Stephen P. New also is a fine wrestling fan, a sponsor of these programs, and also, I'll have you know, Brian, that he has a fine podcast called House of Kayfabe that I've done a guest spot on that will be airing in the not-too-distant future. Well, hold and, on. Uh, you never what? do guest spots. You did a guest spot? I did a guest spot for Stephen P. New. Wow. That's big news. That's, that's, that's new news because he is a, he's a big new. He really is. He's a big man, and he can make you even bigger, folks. If you've been trodden down and, and left in the gutter on the side of the road like some piece of garbage by somebody that you want to get even with, Call Stephen P. New, newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084, and he will pick you up from the muck of the gutter and deliver you into a fluffy bird's nest on the ground. 